this episode of Running Rust, we find a donor car to fill this and turn the donor car into this. It just would not stay running. No, it didn't. It won't run for more than five seconds. And it smells like wrong. Like it. who's gonna steer? Hunter, you want to steer it? What? Because if anybody's gonna rear end my own truck, it's gonna be me. <laughs> okay, gotcha. You're driving the truck. Dude, what the heck? Oh no, they're making it. Oh. Oh wait, here we go. We're back in the car. Real slow. I, I don't trust him at all. <laughs> He'll be fine. This is, you see the wheel is like. Oh. Yeah, well you're gonna feel every bit of it now. You're not gonna try to start it, right? No. Just. All right, so we're heading back to the build site at Ricky's house and my son Josh here is uh, steering the Mustang back it runs but only uh, for well if anything we know now this is a running engine transmission shifts, shifts differential, clutch. differentials yep so the good thing is the computer everything related to the engine starting is fully functional so now it's a matter of the teardown. And uh, hey, Josh, tell us a little bit about how you did this once before. So uh, we, well, I have a 1960 Mercury Comet. Um, I bought a 1991 Fox Body Mustang GT that had been salvaged um, with only 60,000 miles. And it was salvaged back in, I think it was 2002. Um, we bought that, got it running similar to this. Um, it, it stalled out and everything just the same. Pulled the engine out, transmission out. We went fully through them. Uh, you know, replaced gaskets, fluids, um, bought a painless wiring harness, and basically revamped the whole thing, swapped it in the car, and now we got a fully functional 1960 Mercury Comet that is essentially a 91 Fox body underneath. But this one, we're gonna go one step further. Um, we're gonna also use the differential. 0.8 differential in the back, probably gonna swap it to 410 gears, um, but my Comet, I built a custom Ford 9 inch before I ever had plans of buying a Fox body. So, ooh, ooh and oh my God. Filled every bit of that. Yeah, I, I think he forgot that he had to ease into it. Well, the wonderful thing, or the cool thing about this car being a fully functional car well, we're gonna, as we get towed behind. As we get towed behind. Well, in theory, it did run, it did burn out, it did a few things. But the best thing about this whole thing is the fact that we are jumping further ahead by having a donor car that we can basically take, how, many, how much do you think we're going to be taking this? Like 50% of it? We're going to take the engine, the transmission, the differential, and if we're lucky, the drive shaft, maybe we'll just get it resized, but it has to be a little bit shortened because um, the Falcon's a pretty short wheelbase. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna use this for everything we can. Try to save some money and maybe make some money along the way um, by recycling parts, by selling them as a parts Yeah, car. and back when he had the 91 that went uh, for the Comet, he basically made back all your money plus. Yeah, I, so I bought that for, we bought this for 1200. I bought that other one. Oh, ready, three, two, one, Ooh. go. I'm not breaking. That's he's pulling real hard. Slowly. Oh, 
So we don't know if this car... I think that he broke something. He broke something. But I don't know for certain if this car will bring the kind of money that the Fox Body 91 brings. did. But we're certainly going to give it a try. We're going to put a lot of the good parts for sale. Uh, hopefully after today, we'll still have some good parts. Yeah, if he keeps yanking us around like this, we might be in some trouble. <laughs> um, but... The Fox body I bought for $1,500. I sold $2,500 worth of parts. And then I got rid of the car itself or sold it to someone for 400 bucks at the end. So almost doubled the money on it. Um, and I used that to finish the rest of the build on the, uh, the Comet. So hopefully if we can make our money back with this car, that'd be perfect because we could recycle that money right back into it. Yes. All right. All right, we are finally back. I saw that you were like it was it was just about to happen. I was like, I was like, oh, no, no. And then I heard Poof. Unfortunately, towing it back had its own set of problems. Hey, Josh, come on. I, how do you get this thing to pull? Dude, this whole thing, yeah, this whole thing got moved, like shifted up. So the reason that we broke down is so the mass airflow sensor and the O2 sensors are what decide how much fuel this gets and when they get it. If you look right here. So when we hold these, this come, come take a peek at this. So right here, when we hold it like that, it runs. Wabam! Oh, look at that. That wire is, is, is ripped. So essentially, whenever we disconnect this, the car stalls out. Which is fine. I mean, we don't need that because we're going to buy a whole new painless wiring harness for this. Come over here, too. Look at this. But, uh, yeah. Is it smoking? We smoking. <laughs> Woo! Well, can't take this to a restaurant because no smoking. I'm just glad that we had a toaster in. Man, that's just good thinking. Let me just take this off. Hey, look at that. Performance. Dude, we paid too little for this car. Um, so overall, kind of the things that we found about this Mustang, after we got it running, um, it she's still she's still a little touchy. Uh, she's not she doesn't like to run uh, when it's cold. Uh, we had feelings that it had it could overheat any moment. It's got a funky smell on the inside. The clutch is tough. Uh, the gas pedal you have to get floor it getting into gear. Um, yeah, the gas pedal is totally worn out. It takes totally over three quarter out. throttle for her to recognize. Yeah. She smokes a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. What's your favorite thing about the car? Um, the favorite thing about the car is obviously the sound. The thing is amazing. The thing is a beast. And tech screws down here. That makes me so happy. Dude, this car totally used to be white. Yeah. Yeah. I wish yeah, the white would have stayed. It would have been a lot cooler if it was white. With with the amount of zip ties and tech screws in it, I think that maybe we once owned this car. <laughs> <laughs> it makes that feel at home. I feel like we definitely owned it at one point or another. So right now, we're trying to get the whole front of the car kind of disassembled, so that way our Harbor Freight uh, engine hoist will be able to get close enough to pull the engine out. Because right now, we'd be rubbing up against the bumper, bumper and ruining it. And Harbor Freight, our hero. Harbor Fre we're Harbor Freight heroes, and we need the money to sell these parts <laughs> to build that. So they did metric, and they did standard. So I gotta do the bottom of it still. Probably something on this front corner it feels like. And 
need to get the bolt head out of the socket. Okay, there we go. There That's you go, good. got her. You watch Now we got her. He's got to pause this still. No. <sighs> the transmission right now is still stuck in the transmission mount. Cable. <laughs> you know, I was gonna ask that. Did someone disconnect the clutch? Nah. Fuck that. It's on the by the radio. Alright guys, so we're here with the 
aftermath of our donor car. This is the 302 that we got out of that 95 Mustang that you saw. So the idea behind this is to get this cleaned up. We're gonna be replacing a few things. We're doing the camshaft, the cylinder head, and the intake. Uh, we wanna try and get everything all ready to go. That way we can get a lot more power into this because there's no replacement for displacement. We're trying to make it so that way it gets a lot more airflow going through it. Um, so essentially we're going to also replace the pistons and the crankshaft. We're gonna do a stroker kit in the engine to increase it from a 302 to a 347. And with aluminum cylinder heads, a bigger intake, and better overall, we should hopefully be able to do some wheelies and double the horsepower. Thank you.